these guys. So this is a couple that I've never covered before. This is someone talking about Mud Flood. If you don't know what Mud Flood is, this is a conspiracy theory that involves people believing that modern cities, buildings, stuff like that from the early 1900s around there were not actually built by people in the 1900s, but are actually ancient cities. Some claim Babylonian, some claim otherwise, and that they were just buried in the Americas for <laughs> millennia until Americans got there. You know, Americans, not natives, but like <laughs> people who came and colonized, just unearthed these cities and started living in them. It's wacko. So let's take a look. Meek says, all we know is that it's higher than corn cobs. That's probably not true. Jake probably has more subs than me. What's up, y'all? Uh, thank you, UVD Semper Virens. Ah, so, the fun part... Check, check, sounds working. The fun part about uh, researching resets... My researcher said not by a... Or my research said not by a researcher on the bingo card. Is that, um... At least in the U.S., they happened everywhere. So they most likely happened in a local city um, that you may live near towards. Um, and uh, you can go investigate these things yourself because there's still remnants of those times. Um, San Francisco, uh, I lived for a little bit in San Francisco growing up. And San Francisco is a really weird place um, because... Um, it just has a really weird vibe, and it's the same vibe that, like, I got from being in, uh, Shanghai. Uh, it was the same vibe I got in Japan. His evidence is vibes? Okay, Tucker White says Mud Flood sounds like the nickname of, uh, Redneck Woodstock. Same vibe I got in Nicaragua. Um, just, like... Something wrong happened there. Like, beautiful places, but definitely have v weird vibes. San Francisco, for sure, um, has a very strange vibe. And when you're there and you walk around and you look at the architecture, you can tell that there has been multiple periods have gone by in this city's um, history. Yeah, that's that's all cities. Cities, uh, by their very nature, are metropolitan centers where lots of people congregate. And as the city expands, as population increases, you build new buildings. So some buildings, like let's look at a city like New York. This works for basically any city, though. You'll have older buildings that are historical. Uh, you'll have newer buildings that are very nice and new and use new architectural techniques and styles. It's not uncommon. And, um, they don't build a whole city in one night. They, uh, Rome wasn't built in a day, as they say. They, uh, and so since I got into researching resets, I found out that San Francisco is one of, like, the main reset cities in the U.S. Chicago is another one of a major reset city. Um, but San Francisco has actually had probably multiple resets. Um, San Francisco um, is built on the San Andreas. If this guy went to London, his brain would melt. His fault, right on the middle of it, right on a small peninsula. So you got a lot of people in a very small amount of area. Um, so we have mainstream accounts of these resets. I mean, there's earthquakes and fires from what is it, 1890 to 1906. There were. Oh, God, I just noticed his American flag is upside down. <laughs> if you don't know, uh, upside down American flags, or upside down flags in general, I guess, but normally it's an American flag that I've seen, is a distress signal. It means you are in immediate danger. It's an SOS, basically, yes. I'm guessing this guy is like a far-right Trump supporter type who feels that the nation has been stolen or something. Conspiracy theorist type, basically. Blackwing Hecate with 45 bits says, If every vampire who said he was at the crucifixion was actually there, it would have been like Woodstock. I actually, I was actually at Woodstock. It was a weird gig. I fed off a flower person and I spent the next six hours watching my hands move. <laughs> who says that? 
Blogarth says, this guy sounds a lot like the guy that would hang out at a local gas station in my old hometown that would always have an eight ball in his mouth. Or five. Cites a study from the 18th or 19th century. Not a study. He's citing buildings and things that happened. Ice Queen says, Spike from Buffy. Gotcha. Seven. Seven. Haven't seen Buffy. Sorry. I've seen, I, I've seen a couple episodes. I haven't actually sat down and watched it. Seven. Seven Super. major fires or earthquakes. And we're talking in this about very city small area. destroyed. I mean, one of them. Before 1906. Accounts. Yes. Like before. Yes. Before the one we were all taught in school. The, before the, the earthquake and fire that they shoved down our throats in elementary school. At least for both of us growing up in California, they shoved the earthquake of San Francisco mm -hmm. down our throats, as well as the gold rush. Um, well, I mean, they're trying to teach you your state's history. In elementary, I also had, like, we had, of course, U.S. history and world history. World history actually might have come later in middle school. I don't know. But um, we also had one year where we did Michigan history in my elementary school. Yeah, they teach you the history of your state. That's not uncommon. Hydrate. And, of course, giant earthquakes that destroy a large part of a city, that's a pretty big part of your history. So finding out you know starting to research this stuff and finding out that san francisco's a reset town was is no shock to me always having a very weird vibe from a place um and uh yeah so the mainstream says that basically san francisco was empty um, before 1949 or 1948 when the when the gold rush started and was basically you know had like scattered buildings um, a, a very small town site and that's it and basically from 1849 to 1870 ish 1880-ish which is all of these photos um, you know 1890s 1900 turn of the century that era the next 35 years after the gold rush they allegedly built all of these buildings and you know if you're not questioning it if you're some kid learning it in school you're like okay well i don't know who built those buildings so he's just surprised that they were able to build buildings quickly why <laughs> trouble for wi-fi says does this guy ever cover black wall street it's literally a reset city and it was covered up for a hundred years i doubt Dr. White says, this might be a stupid question, but what the fuck is a reset city? I'm guessing it's a city that basically has to restart and recover after a major disaster of some sort. Someone did at some point, so that's all that matters, really. Um, but while researching resets, you know, and, and that's kind of, you know, you, you don't think like that way anymore. You think of like, okay, how did we build all this stuff? And, and Because people put time, money, energy, and labor into rebuilding the city because it was in a desirable location and there's no reason to not rebuild it. And when these guys were allegedly out in the mines working, allegedly they were, you know, most of them were illiterate, definitely don't know good math enough to be a contractor. Um, but these guys were all out in the gold fields work. What? Do you think the people who mined the gold were the same people that built the buildings do you understand how a gold rush works okay when a gold rush happens in any area when it did happen at least people would not only go out there in order to try and strike it rich by finding a gold deposit they would go to work for companies that had set up there to take advantage of the economic boom in the area so in the area if there's a disaster like an earthquake or a fire or whatever and things get destroyed, there's a lot of incentive to rebuild quickly so you can rebuild that infrastructure to allow people to get back to work and mine that gold because there's wealth to be had for the workers, for the owners, for the local businesses who will serve the workers and the owners, etc. This is not hard to understand. It's a demand thing. The area is in high demand for building and living and businesses because tons of people want to go there and work and get this gold so they can make money. <laughs> Marcus Drake says, don't know good math enough to be a contractor. With sentences like that, let's not throw stones, sir. Working and allegedly this massive metropolis was built with the biggest buildings most beautiful perfect buildings you've ever seen in your yeah i'd imagine there was a lot of money in the area considering you know the gold rush <laughs> 
where did they get all this money in this area where one of the most precious resources in human history was found in abundance? Your life. Yeah, and tiny populations too. Tiny That's populations. It makes sense for these buildings to be built this magnificent, magnificent. You think turn of the century San Francisco had a small population for the time? It was growing. It's grown into one of the biggest cities in the United States for a reason. What? You know, hugely it to this it makes day no sense, really. it makes no sense when you go up north why the cities are so big. Yeah. Anyway, because people live there. What do you mean? Why are cities so big? This just sounds like a bumpkin being like, gosh darn it, I don't understand these city folk. Why do they need so many tall buildings? Me and Jethro go down by the creek and we hang out in a shack for three days while we go fishing and that's enough for us. Why all these highfalutin city folk need all these tall, shiny buildings? <laughs> People fucking live there, idiot. What do you mean? Um, so, you know, you gotta start... Okay, so another thing, so the, or the 1949 gold rush, big deal, that's when- There were 25,000 people in San Francisco around 1849? Yeah, for the time, that's a lot of people. <laughs> Allegedly, uh, San Francisco boomed, and then in 1906 is when the, the- You said the 1949 gold rush? Let's see. Population of San Francisco. Go 1949. San Francisco census data, 1950. Let's go 1950. The total population of San Francisco in the year 1950, which is a year after he is talking about, were 775,000 people living in 698,176 households. Three quarters, over three quarters of a million people. Well, gosh darn it, why don't they all live in big old tents like me and Bobby Lee? and Bobby Lee? I, they live in fucking buildings. What do you mean? There's three quarters of a million people there working and trying to mine. What? <laughs> big, big, big earthquake um, and subsequent fire we are all taught about happened. Tube Man with 100 bits says the funniest thing about this topic is that the best example they could use is Mexico City, which was built in the 13th century by the Aztecs and is still lived in today. Even though six... Yeah, I know. He meant 1849. I was making fun of him. Times before the same thing happened in San Francisco, allegedly in its very short lifespan. <laughs> the Civil War was 1965, right? <laughs> um, which makes you kind of wonder, why would you keep building there? Especially bringing massive populations there when they're because of the resources because of the resources in san francisco i'm pretty sure is also a fucking port city it's valuable to live there what is plenty of land everywhere else why build on top of each other in san francisco in this tiny dangerous place but anyway we're not you know <laughs> so case. yeah no totally different discussion so so then this earthquake and fire happens, which we are taught in school, it, it was a earthquake and then a fire happened and then the whole town was vaporized, basically. Um, but, uh, and, and what you, you buy, you're like, okay, well, there's lots of earthquakes in California. Um, you know, they knew San Francisco had earthquakes. They probably shouldn't have built, you know, like all that stuff comes in where you're just rationalizing it. And that makes sense. Um, but then once you dig into the story and you dig into the mainstream story and then you dig into like the mainstream accounts and then you start digging into like the really deep stuff which is like people's personal accounts and photography and videos of the era and then just wasn't there also where a bunch of immigrants from asia came in through yes um that's actually the plot of a marvel comic or at least the adaptation of big hero six they live in a city called San Fran Okio or something. And it's like an alternate universe where I believe after this, the city gets destroyed in the actual historical event he's talking about in this alternate universe, um, immigrants uh, are given much more like, you know, 
decision making ability and and in the city and stuff so it ends up being rebuilt as sort of a modern san francisco that we know today but with a lot of like asian architecture and culture and stuff like that it's pretty interesting um ice queen with 50 bit says because they fucking can where do you think they should live idiot if you think about you know the behavior of everyone um during this time it all it seems very 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 unusual what's unusual what um human beings recovering after a disaster how unusual human beings also rebuilt um uh um oh god why am i blanking on the name <laughs> oh no new orleans humans also rebuilt new orleans even though that's not an ideal place to be, it doesn't really matter. People do that. It's their home. They want to live there. The the courses of actions the city and the state and the military and the police took and the people. And, um, you know, you start wondering. <laughs> Pronounced Nolens. Yeah, I, I, mm -mm. <laughs> Not for me. Wondering, oh, well, what's going on here? This San Francisco place seems really strange to me. You know, like. When I grew up there, you know, when I'd visit there, I'd be like, this place is strange. Like, this is a strange place um, because it's just overall one of the strangest places, the, uh, the most underrated strangest place on the planet. San Francisco? Why? Um, San Francisco, once you start deeply diving into, you know, these photographs and stuff. But anyway, like... There would be, there's a count, like if you, if you, if you type in San Francisco earthquake uh, per, per, personal accounts, you know, and you start researching, you'll get these accounts that are like, like ridiculous. They're written like poetry. Like they have. How dare people write poetry or speak eloquently about a disaster they lived through. Everyone needs to talk like me and Bobby Lee down by the creek. Why say many words when few words do trick? Tucker White says, why do buildings from this time period look better than just about anything built today? I mean, that's just a personal architectural preference. Um, H. Baird says, if you think San Francisco is weird, he should try Berkeley. They're just like, they're written like someone who's a writer at a school was given a task to like, hey, make this really exciting sounding story about how tra- They didn't have TV. They wrote and read things other people wrote for entertainment. What? Ashibu74 says, Is this whole argument vibes and a person did something I wouldn't personally do? Like, legit? I keep waiting for him to bring up another point, but nope. Seems like it. Uh, Christian American says, Digging the metal band cover art. Uh, Happy New Year. Thanks. Tragedy struck. The cover art look. Thank you. <laughs> a, a large city and everyone got together and and just like killed it and rebuilt the city in an amazing amount of time um yeah human beings are capable of pretty impressive feats when we actually like get together and do something we just kind of suck at that nowadays <laughs> but she's really looked into the accounts she's she's pointed me at some stuff and i'm like what is going on here because just there's a very obvious different difference between the accounts written by the mainstream and the actual personal accounts of people on the street are you saying that i don't is are you saying the people on the streets accounts are more eloquent or the officials like media people because if you're surprised that like newspapers are writing eloquent accounts that are very vivid that's because that's their job they don't have TV and video cameras and stuff to show events, so they need to paint a very vivid picture of events for people to read and understand what's happening? What? You get these very fanciful stories from the mainstream, and then the people on the street were confused as all hell. Wait, is he surprised that the media is, like, very vivid and sensationalist in their reporting? What? about what was going on in San Francisco at the time because it's very, very unusual to learn about what was going on there during the time and what actually caused all this, the, the destruction of San Francisco. When, when I was a kid, they taught us it was all earthquake and fire um, because, you know, everyone built all their houses old-timey and it just couldn't handle the fire. Or they built their houses um, not knowing they were in an earthquake zone and, you know, which all ended up being BS. But, but yeah, like, 
there was this lady, the first lady you, you read some stuff to. Yeah, uh, the eyewitness account. Yeah, so she, first of all, she talks about being surprised how cheery everyone looked despite their... Yeah. Yeah, I'd be happy I survived. I'd be happy I survived. And just been a, being an earthquake and the there more, being a disaster. The more of these things you um, re you read, you start seeing this this people noticing that the general population was acting as if they were. It was no different of a day, or were yeah. almost gleeful at the sight of their entire city being blown apart. Tiger White says, "I really want that house on the ledge." dangerous which is very unusual uh to say the least um you would think that you know yeah. maybe you know you'd think like there'd be you'd be seeing people in misery everywhere people can be in shock people can be happy they survived a disaster even if their possessions are gone what but when you look at these photos um not these especially because i think this is from of the uh the the world's fair but um you'll look at photos and just people like like it's so unusual like there stuff are, like yes. this like there you go yeah like what they're taking, they're taking a selfie in front of that's not what selfie means it's just a photograph the city burning down you know yeah and human beings do shit like this what and so yeah people do that today people are dumb people are weird you see and then a lot of the video footage there's like a lot of documentaries and stuff i'm glad 9 11 happened before tiktok can you imagine how many videos there would be of dumb new york kids like flossing in front of the world trade center or with the world trade centers in the background as they're like burning jesus christ um Ashipu with 50 bits says, People today build homes and buildings in flood, tornado, hurricane, and earthquake zones uh, while being perfectly knowledgeable about the risk. Humans like building things where they want to build them. Consequences be damned. In the case of rebuilding, it makes even more sense. Uh, if my house got leveled, I would want to build a new house in the same-ish spot to attempt to return to normalcy. These people have no comprehension of empathy or understanding of others. It's so frustrating. Yeah, I know. Of, <clears throat> of the San Francisco earthquake. And... You just don't ever see anyone really sad. Um, you just see everyone like they... It's 1849. That might even not be the worst thing that happened to them that year. They probably lost three different kids in the last five years uh, to, like, diphtheria. Like, life was pretty shit back in the day. Don't get me wrong. It's not great now either, but it's relatively better. These people, I don't think, were strangers to uh, tragedy. This guy comment fallen says, "Introduce this guy to tornado chasers." Knew it was gonna happen almost. Well, at least there's a or at least a part of the population there knew to, they were kind of in on they were something. Better off for some reason than the rest of the people. Yeah. Definitely. Also, I'm gonna be real. If I lived in a town that was run by like robber baron pieces of shit who were taking advantage of miners and other laborers, and then all their shit collapsed, I'd find it a little funny. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying, like, eh. like yeah, my house got fucked up, but so did the asshole that I hate. You know. Yeah. Um, Felix Night Owl with 45 bits says, Hannah, did you eat your black eyed peas for good luck in the new year? My dad always made us eat them on New Year's Eve and I hated it as a kid, but now I love them. What are you? No, that's not a thing anyone does. What are you talking about? Why are you asking like that's a thing other people do? No one does that like it's a thing. What are you talking about? <laughs> K.R. Goss says, my husband had dysentery while they were in Kenya. That shit kills and it's awful. Yeah, no one wants to shit themselves to death. Blackwing Hackadee says, A, sucks to suck, being a robber baron. Also, B, your girl got a date. Fuck yes. I hope you absolutely kill it on that date. <laughs> Wait, other people did? No, 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 no. What are you talking about? There are people who eat black-eyed peas on New Year's. Why? What the fuck? <laughs> What the shit? 
<sighs> Probably a Lannister says, I'm Hispanic and my family eats 12 grapes. Don't know if anyone else did that. Bittergrin says, it's actually a thing. Oh, why? What? Okay. I've been proven wrong. I don't know about the Black Eyed Peas thing. Um, Stromboli says, Black Eyed Peas are for health and collard greens are for money. <laughs> Ashy Boo says, for another odd New Year's Eve tradition, a friend of mine made a bread and her family slammed all the doors with the bread to shoo away the old year. I don't get it, but she has a chaos elemental, so I wasn't surprised. What the fuck is... Human beings are so weird. The, like, this one woman who was giving her eyewitness account, I mean, she was talking about how there were rumors of the... Was it the fairies being burned down and people... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For days and days and days, um... Stuck, up, stuck on the peninsula. Moving, San Francisco is a peninsula. Yeah, you can't leave area. without fairies or getting out a certain way, so they didn't know they could leave. But it was like... It was like they told everyone the fairies burnt down so they can get their people out for, you know, type yeah. of situation. Kind of yeah, rich people being selfish. And again, I don't even know if what this guy is saying is true, but it's not the most unbelievable thing ever. Rich people are assholes. Did you know that? I know that. Like, is, if you it's like another 9-11. It see. just, it exactly. reeks of false flag. Oh, we already had false flag on the bingo card, I think. And even the Earth... Yeah, Peninsula is not an island. I think the implication that he's trying to make is that the one outlet of the peninsula to other, you know, parts of the... of California or whatever, I assume he just thinks it was blocked, which it may or may not have been. I don't know. Quake part of it reeks of PSYOP because... It's not a... it's not a PSYOP. We haven't even talked about the dynamite. So, <laughs> the the craziest thing for me to find out, I think for both of us to find out, is that most of the... Why, why is basketball on all of a sudden? That's not a basketball uniform, is it? That's a baseball uniform. It says MLB on her microphone. What? Is it most of the... Why, why is bad? So we're clear this isn't racist disbelief? No, I don't think so. Basketball on all of a sudden. I don't even watch baseball. That was baseball. Oh, now he said baseball. Huh. So the, uh, the firemen immediately started dynamiting the city. And then the military showed up and took over the dynamiting. And they dynamited the whole town. Yeah, things are probably structurally unstable and they wanted to do controlled demolition instead of everything falling down at random times and endangering people. What? Uh, Jamie Lynn says that's to make a fire break, you idiot. Oh, nice. Not only that, they, let's just not glaze over, they instilled martial law. They, and they, they put... No, it has to be call saying, huh, it can't be anyone. Out a notice for everyone other than beer to pour your alcohol down the drain. They So there was like a... Because they didn't want it to burn. Alcohol burns. Like spirits? Spirits burn. What? They were trying to stop the fire. <laughs> Stromboli for Wi-Fi says, did someone say dynamite? Did somebody say boom? <laughs> Prohibition, prohibition, martial, martial law, law. Um, and then the prohibition is for whatever. You know, I don't remember. And we're kind of controlling still. how people could go in um, on. Yeah. We have these personal accounts we've wrote, writ, written, <laughs> we've read <laughs> right. yeah. that uh, where they're like, yeah, like I, I was, I was forced at bayonet point out of my building by. Yeah, it was probably structurally insecure or, like someone else said, they needed it to try and stop the fire from spreading further. Tucker White with 50 bits says, okay, we've gone long enough without this. It's needed here. Intercourse. Shut up, shut up, shut up! <laughs> Jesus Christ, man, what the hell is wrong with you? Please, just shut up! Cool. It's been long enough where that gets a... I feel that one again. A military, yeah. and they blew up my building, basically. You know, like... 
And this is what is going like. If, if, let's say this happens sense. now. Let's say L.A. has a big earthquake, right? <laughs> Los Angeles, the city I live in now. Then the government shows up and starts blowing up buildings. Like we have more modern methods of fighting fires nowadays. But if they needed to, yeah, they would absolutely blow up your building in order to try and stop prevent a fire. Though a lot of modern buildings aren't just brick. A lot of them are flammable materials, insulation. Um, although if it's fiberglass insulation, I guess it's not flammable or as flammable. Um, but uh, yeah, if they had to, they would. Yes, you think the government wouldn't? wouldn't collapse your house or building if it could be used to like help stop a greater disaster of course they would wouldn't you kind of question that like does that is there metal cladding filled with oil products yeah some sort of rationale behind blowing up there is yeah the most beautiful stone buildings in the world like the other thing, I mean, we're not going to get really deep on this, but like when a old stone and wood building burns, usually all the wood burns out of it and the, and the structure stays, um, you know, and so San Francisco has all these buildings like this. So they go around blowing them up to save the city. Um, just Okay, so you just you just said you understand then they were trying to stop the fire from spreading further and stopping these buildings from continuing to be a mode through which the fire can continue to spread. Really weird. And it wasn't like you had um a few groups of people like government like the cops were trying to they thought or the firemen thought they knew what they were doing and the government had to step in and be all what the fuck are you guys yeah. doing? You know, it wasn't like that. You had authorities fighting over being able to dynamite the city <laughs> yeah because different groups probably thought they had, were better equipped to do so in order to stop the spread of the fire blackwing hecate with 45 Yo, bits showed up. <laughs> still showed up and started blowing up buildings that's it, right <laughs> something's protecting it something unnatural he not, I forgot about this part. Not only the alcohol thing, so they also, any cars in the city... Oh, were commandeered. Were commandeered to, to, to transport, transport the dynamite. transport dynamite all over to, the city. The None of that's suspicious. That makes sense considering what is happening. That so anyone who had it, there weren't that many cars back then. Yeah. So all the cars were straight, common, and you could find video. It's like pictures. film. And you found video from 1849 and pictures of this happening. of these guys putting dynamite and just these Edison's gonna sue someone idiots like these dudes running around with rifles and boxes of dynamite blowing up buildings like I bet I could google this and find the answer why did they blow up buildings in San Francisco. Let's take a look. The city used explosives in an attempt to clear a path, but untrained crews instead helped spread the fire. By mid-afternoon, April 1906, San Francisco was a ring of fire, a pillar of smoke, and virtually out of water. Authorities were desperate, out of control blazes from an earthquake had turned into a firestorm, moving through the city like a funnel cloud. With no other means to fight back, Army General Frederick Funston and civil authorities decided on a last resort, using dynamite to create fire breaks. The idea was to destroy part of the city to save the rest. It turned out to be one of the biggest mistakes in San Francisco history. So again, they were trying to stop the fire, but they did a bad job. That's the answer. I didn't hear that. And then you hear, you, there are more accounts. Uh, accounts of basically... What's the conspiracy supposed to be? That the government destroyed this city for some reason. For some nefarious purpose. Blackwing Hecate says, a fire tornado. Yeah, a fire tornado. A lot of the accounts you get is, oh, I was, I was woken up by a huge explosion. You know? And once you start taking into consideration... They're dynamiting everything. You know, maybe could there possibly not have even been an earthquake? It causes a lot of confusion. Regard, like, re no, no, there was an earthquake. They're in San Francisco. It's on a fault line, like a lot of California. Regardless of what actually happened, if they suffered. Like if, 
if, explosions if, happen. If you tell everyone to, to, to go dynamite every other building on the block <laughs> and at 5 a.m. light the fuse and they all go off, people from the 1800s aren't going to know that it's an earthquake or... I'm pretty sure people who live in California know what an earthquake is. Do you think that was the only earthquake they ever experienced in their whole life? Or their building being blown up or bombed? Or yeah, adjacent. Bombed? Yeah, who Even? knows? I mean, at, at that point. So. Very unusual. It's a deep rabbit hole. There's many eyewitness accounts. Very look, unusual. This is a virtual exhibit of the like San Francisco City. Okay, I got a comment on this. They were blowing up buildings in a failed attempt to create fire breaks to stop the spread of the fire. It wasn't a conspiracy. It was a failed plan. You could literally look this up in five seconds. <sighs> Virtual exhibit you can look up. Um, Ms. Bella Kitty says, I used to live in California and there's a mini earthquake at least once a month. That's how common they are. Yeah, that's my understanding <laughs> is that they're pretty common. It's just the big ones get really bad. You can click around to every and look back in history at every building that was there, but that's like, it's just it's very 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 unusual rabbit hole and um, yeah it goes and, and you can go investigate it still because there's still some buildings left. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think if we hit everything, I think we did. I mean just about, but you know, I mean, it's, it's just impossible. but and the other so the thing is is that like while San Francisco is a pretty big reset town, like I said, there every major city was possibly. Um, built around um, a star city, um, which is uh, older stuff. Uh, yeah, built old, old stuff. Older things, a, lot. a star city. A lot of these, there's got to be at least one building in every major city across. But like, the if you States, listen to yeah, the mainstream, older. they're like, "Oh no, the United States was just empty, and there was just some random savages." I've I've had exactly in my life. I felt exactly one earthquake. It was, like, between 2012 and 2014. I don't remember exactly when it was in Michigan. But I lived on the top floor of my apartment building. And I, I'm i so unfamiliar because earthquakes just don't ever happen in Michigan that I was confused. I didn't understand what was happening. The whole building started moving and I was like, oh, shit, is this thing, like, structurally gonna... Like, what is happening? Is this structurally unsecure and it's gonna collapse? I literally didn't understand it was an earthquake until I read later in the day, like on Facebook, someone was talking about it. And I was like, oh, that makes sense. <laughs> and uh, we showed up and just like, you know, made it awesome. <laughs> it was a very tiny earthquake. It only lasted like a couple seconds and it was just very strange. 2014, thank you. When um, the more you research... <clears throat> and I know it sounds a little crazy if you haven't done the same research, but the more you research, you're like, ah, there was more, there was stuff here long before the timeline that they're saying. And um, the deeper you look at these things, that especially did he say savages? Oh God, I missed it. And it Across but like, the if you States, listen to yeah, the mainstream, older. they're like, oh no, the United States was just empty, and there was just yeah. some random savages. Oh fucking yikes! And uh, we. Sh yeah, let's not dehumanize indigenous peoples, please. That'd be great. Showed up and just like, you know, made it awesome. <laughs> when um, the more you research, <clears throat> and I know, research. I know it sounds a little crazy if you haven't done the same research, but the more you research, you're like, ah, there was, more, there was stuff here long before. The yeah, <laughs> lots of indigenous societies that were wiped out due to disease and later colonization as it expanded throughout the Americas. Timeline that they're saying. And um, the deeper you look at these things, that, especially the things they pointed out to us in school, you kind of you, you dive deep on those and you're like, wait a minute, this is complete BS. And why was it yeah. so important that they taught me this stuff in school? Uh, like the apes and Shadow, bing, let me see your bingo card. If you say you got a bingo and I'll check it.
1906 earthquake. But anyway, or Aspen Shadow. Sorry. Um, yeah. So it's just you know, and then you like this stuff. This like this gleeful, gleeful. You just gotta take like the the you know the URL of your bingo card and just post it in the chat, and I'll take a look. Oh, that's them. Like if you loved your city, like. Like, you know, like, My New Yorkers, like, oh, man, New Yorkers love their ago, city. But, but, they would but, never yep, laugh at it being burnt down, or they would never be happy about that. We have a bingo winner, everyone. Aspen Shadow. Uh, would you like me to gift you a sub, or would you like it to be gifted to someone else? I don't want to be presumptuous. Let me know. You know, we saw what happened on 9-11, um, and it's like... <clears throat> Seeing this glee, hearing all these accounts of there being like a very strange population, um, and then seeing pictures of people and watch watching videos of people like almost celebrating. And you're cool with anyone. If you're cool with anyone, I'm gonna pick you. <laughs> Gift sub. Payment processing. Hydrate. Will do. There you go. Enjoy the gift sub. That is our official bingo winner for today. We can still play for fun, but that is the official winner. Fu Man Chewy with nine months says, what do we name the sub baby? We're going to name it Billy Bob Jean after this fellow's presumed name. Watching gleefully as the city is dynamited, it can only, it only really, I can only... Compare it to one thing, unfortunately, uh, that's happening these days, and it just kind of makes you wonder, you know, like, what, what are we just like seeing a cycle of things happening, and are there just re oh no, that's anti Semitism on the bingo card, I'm guessing. He sets every once in a while, and there's just like. <laughs> But, like, you know, this is the only thing I could compare that to, realistically, is, you know, watching this happen. Um, so, I don't really know. But look into it, guys. We'll talk to you later. Peace. Yikes. Look, I don't like people uh, cheering at the burning of someone's religious uh, buildings either, but uh, I don't feel like that's why you picked that video. I don't think that's why he picked that video. Yikes. Let's move on, shall we? At least he saved the anti-Semitism until the very end so he didn't have to suffer through it for very long.